Dear sisters and brothers, we are slaves. We are being exploited in every possible way. We live under an economical system that transfer the wealth from the people to the pockets of the elites. Sadly, most of the population are still unaware of how the 1% are looting the rest of us. It's for this reason that in this video, I will reveal few of the many ways in which the New World Order elites are discreetly extracting our wealth. Yes. And the fact of the matter is that there, there's a refusal on both the Democratic and the Republican side of the aisle to acknowledge the mathematical problem, which is that a United States of America is being extracted. It's being extracted through banking, it's being extracted through trade, and it's being extracted through taxation. And there's not a single politician that has stepped forward, Susan, to deal with this. We could live in a world where the countries could issue their own money free of interests, but instead, a private banking cartel, through wars, threats, bribes, and murders, have taken over the issuance of currency, turning money into debt, and demanding it to be paid back with interests. That means, an important part of the taxes you pay, wouldn't need to be paid, if your government could issue its own money free of interests. It's expected that in the next 10 years, United States will have to pay more than 4 trillions in interests. Can you imagine all the things that US could build with all this money? The interests are the weapon the bankers use to steal our wealth and bankrupt our nations. In the past, two US presidents, Kennedy and Lincoln, gave the power to issue money to the Congress. But they both got killed and their reforms avoided. Got all this stuff, the Fed just shouldn't exist. You believe the same thing, make the case. Well, for the, for the f first, first reason is it's not authorized in the Constitution, so it's, not, it's an illegal institution. And the second reason it's an immoral institution because we have delivered to a secretive body the privilege of creating money out of thin air. If you or I did it, we'd be called counterfeiters, so why have we legalized counterfeiting? Central banks are private, corrupt, and non-transparent institutions who use their power to issue money to enrich themselves and their close friends? Why should society give the power to create something as important as currency to a private institution which is accountable to anyone? Isn't that stupid? Let's see what kind of things occur when you let this happen. Well, I have a copy of the Inspector General Act here in front of me, and it says, among other things, that it's your responsibility to conduct and supervise audits and investigations relating to the programs and operations of your agency. That's correct. So I'm asking you if your agency has, in fact, according to Bloomberg, extended $9 trillion in credit, which, by the way, works out to $30,000 for every single man, woman, and child in this country. I'd like to know, if you're not responsible for investigating that, who is? That we actually... We have responsibility for the Federal Reserve's programs and operations audits to conduct audits and investigations in that area. Um, in terms of who's responsible for investigating, would you mind repeating the question one more time? What have you done to investigate the off-balance sheet transactions conducted by the Federal Reserve, which according to Bloomberg now total $9 trillion in the last eight months? I'll have to look specifically at that Bloomberg article. I, I'm not, um, I, I don't know if I have actually seen that particular one. That's not the point. The question is, have you done any investigation or auditing of off-balance sheet transactions conducted by the Federal Reserve? At this point, we're at the very, we're conducting our lending facility project at a fairly high level and have not gotten to a specific level of detail to really be in a position to respond to your question. Have you conducted any investigation or auditing of the losses that the Federal Reserve has experienced on its lending since last September? We're still in the process of conducting that review. Until we actually, you know, go out and, and gather the information, I'm not in a position to really respond to, to the specific question. So are you telling me that nobody at the Federal Reserve is keeping track on a regular basis of the losses that it incurs on what is now a two trillion dollar portfolio? I don't know if you're, you're telling me that there, you're mentioning that there's losses. I'm just saying that we're not, until we actually look at the program and have the information, we are not in a position to say whether there are losses or to respond in any other way to that. 
that particular Mr. Point. Chairman, my, my time is up, but I have to tell you honestly, I am shocked to find out that nobody at the Federal Reserve, including the Inspector General, is keeping track of this. Another way in which the central banks extract the wealth of the people is through controlling the monetary policies, through regulating the ease of credit, the money supply, the interest rates. The banks can create periods of expansion and recession, and it's during this economic downturns, when most of debtors cannot pay back their debts, and have their assets confiscated by the banks. That's one of the reasons why during recessions, the rich get richer, and the poor get poorer. People sort of thought that maybe um, this, this collapse might be an opportunity to sort of redress problems and, and that things would get more fair and the, and the rich would get less rich and so on. But in fact, usually when financial collapses or depressions happen, <clears throat> historically, um, the banks that come out on top wind up getting a lot stronger than they ever were. The rich who are not in debt but actually hold debt um, uh, and can squeeze because they have the, the means of being able to squeeze that debt out. They get much, much richer than there are now. You know, think about all the, foreclose, uh, all the foreclosures out there. I think there are supposedly maybe another four million homes waiting, right. right, to go into foreclosure. That's going to be somebody's property, and it's not going to be four million people's property. One of the biggest problems we have nowadays is that our governments, who are controlled by the financial elites, have created faulty fiscal policies that allow the big banks and corporations to evade paying taxes and stash their money offshore. The amount of money hidden is mind-blowing. A 2012 report from Tax Justice Network estimated that there was between 20 and 32 trillions of dollars stashed in tax havens. It's appalling that governments allow this to happen. Can you imagine all the things that could be built if this wealth was invested in the real economy? In fact, if our governments are becoming so poor and are forced to cut down on social expenses, and privatize public services. It's in part because the wealth of our nations is being extracted by the super rich. We have become cattle, we are exploited, and the wealth we produce is appropriated by our farmers, the New World Order elites. Um, recent studies uh, have indicated, in Africa at least, that the private assets, the assets held by Africans, far outseed the debts of African countries. The difference is that the assets are held in private hands. These are assets offshore in, in, in banks overseas. Uh, they could easily pay off the debts. Uh, the income on those assets could easily pay off uh, you know, all the debt repayments. But we have this mismatch and, and the burden is that the, the, the debts are borne by the African people in the form of either higher taxes for themselves or degraded public services and impun an, an elite that, that benefits from complete impunity for what they're doing. The money's offshore. There's, uh, there's nothing that anybody can do about it and this leads to the corruption of countries and uh, wholesale subversion of democracy so it's a it's an absolute scourge on developing countries not only we are being looted by the banks but we also bail them out when their bad practices led them to bankruptcy how idiot is that to go bankrupt is part of the risk of running a business why we should bail them out during the 2008 crisis our governments have given trillions to the banks can you imagine if we had invested this money in building infrastructure for our society? Now our governments have become so indebted to save the banks, that they do not even have money to look after the citizens. We're talking about $80,000 for every single American. Imagine if, if you're going to do a bailout, if that money had gone to the people directly instead of going to the banks who just hoarded it and bought up competitors with it. They had no incentive to refinance mortgages or refinance loans of any kind. They just kept the money, gave themselves bonuses, bought up competitors, and are sitting pretty. And they're not loaning money. People are still broke. And the economy is still in a recession and will be. And on top of that, they've inflated the dollar by the government printing up money, took our taxes, and gave it to banks who loan it back to us with interest. Besides, according to a new law passed recently, in the next crisis, the banks will have the right to seize the money of the depositors to prevent bankruptcy. So you have been warned, make sure you don't have tens of thousands of dollars deposited in bank accounts or you run the risk to lose most of it when the next derivative bubble will burst. Another way to loot the resources of a country is through implanting structural adjustment reforms. 
when a country have a crisis of debt, the International Monetary Fund and World Bank can act as lenders of last resort, but in exchange, they will demand the country to do some reforms, which entail privatizations, devaluation of currency, cut subsidies to local industries, remove tariffs, banking restructuration, which are reforms that will deliberately impoverish the country, and allow foreign private corporations to enter in the markets, and loot the country's resources. We economic hitmen really have been the ones responsible for creating this first truly global empire. And we work many different ways. But perhaps the most common is that we will identify a, a country that has resources our corporations covet, like oil, and then arrange a huge loan to that country from the World Bank or one of its sister organizations. But the money never actually goes to the country. Instead, it goes to our big corporations to build infrastructure projects in that country, power plants, industrial parks, ports, things that benefit a few rich people in that country, in addition to our corporations, but really don't help the majority of the people at all. However, those people, the whole country is left holding a huge debt. It's such a big debt they can't repay it, and that's part of the plan they can't repay it. And so at some point we economic hitmen go back to them and say, listen, you lost a lot of money, can't pay your debt, so sell your oil, real cheap to our oil companies. Allow us to build a military base in your country or send troops in support of ours to some place in the world like Iraq or vote with us on the next UN vote to have their electric utility company privatized and their water and sewage system privatized and sold to U.S. corporations or other multinational corporations. So there was a whole mushrooming thing and it's so typical of the way the IMF and the World Bank work. They put a country in debt, and it's such a big debt it can't pay it, and then you offer to refinance that debt and, and, and pay even more interest. And you demand this quid pro quo, which you call a conditionality or good governance, which means basically that they've got to sell off their resources, in, in, including many of their social services, their utility companies, their school systems sometimes, their, their, their penal systems, their insurance systems, to foreign corporations. Another tool used by corporations to enslave humanity are the free trade agreements. These trade deals are really damaging for our economies and for the people for many reasons. They promote a race to the bottom in labor rights and environmental regulations. Free trade destroy entire economies. Since factories move to countries with cheaper labor, only in the United States, millions of jobs have been lost. Free trade removes tariff barriers, which wipes out industries and impoverished farmers from third world countries. Since they cannot compete with the subsidized products from the West, free trade allows transnational corporations to evade taxes easily. And to make things worse, most of the trade deals come with a clause that allow foreign investors to sue the countries if they approve any regulation that can undermine the earnings of corporations. Let's see some examples that show cases of governments being sued and forced to pay generous compensations to the corporations or forced to repeal their regulations. Among other things, Corporations are suing to block a raising of the minimum wage, block health protection measures, overturn a ban on toxic waste dumping in a drinking water area, block compensation for victims of apartheid, block the repeal of water privatization, or block the terms of bank bailouts. As we have seen, dear sisters and brothers, the elites have created an economical order that extract the wealth of the 99% and give it to the one percent. We could live in a world where we all could be rich, but instead, half of the world population subsist for less than two dollars a day, while other earn millions a day. I hope this video have helped the viewer to realize that we are being enslaved, and unless we stand up, dark times will await for us. We are anonymous. We do not forgive, and we do not forget. So, expect us. Well, I'm not going to leave you alone. I want you to get mad.
I don't want you to protest. I don't want you to ride. I don't want you to write to your congressman because I wouldn't know what to tell you to write. I don't know what to do about the depression and the inflation and the Russians and the crime in the street. All I know is that first, you've got to get mad. You've got to say, I'm a human being. God damn it. My life has value.